I'll now head up, uh, hand over to Alex the Dimblemeister Hackett <laughs> to head up the Spastical Questions now. <laughs> so thanks a lot everyone. One intro. Right. Hello everyone. Um, we're now going to grill the Spastical candidates um, in very much the same sort of way that we saw before with the non-Spastical candidates. However, I really want, want to stress to you um, Ask really um, incisive, really good questions. Like really go for these people because they are going to be, you know, heading up your union and be paid by your student union uh, for the next year. Um, so it's very important that you pick the pick well and you pick the right people uh, and that you really get your voice heard. So uh, right, I'm just gonna really smoothly. I'm gonna put this mic. <laughs> Amazing, flawless, oh absolutely flawless. <laughs> Give me a minute. As always. <laughs> John C. Yes. We shared such a beautiful night. Right. <laughs> Hello. Right. I actually feel quite good with it. Right. Do you need music? No. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to open up first questions, obviously, to the floor. Uh, has anyone got any questions for all candidates? Not specific candidates, all candidates. John. Um, to some controversy, we've seen a male stand for a female welfare officer this year. It's not unique to, to Heathrop. Lots of student unions see this, whether it's a political point about gender or whatever, I don't know. But um, is it time that we bite the bullet and say that only women can run for women? Uh, welfare, so men can win, run for male welfare. Okay. Can I jump in? Of course. Right, I think this has become a really, really important issue. And I think, sorry, it, it also, I, it depends, I think, is the answer that I can give. There are obviously welfare issues, and every student union, London wide, nationwide, has such issues. I think perhaps it would be worth, if we're going to review the Constitution and look at other roles within the union anyway, looking at the welfare teams, because I believe strongly that the welfare teams are dependent on skill set, and if you don't have those skills, you shouldn't be able to run for them. Or, you should be willing to demonstrate sincerely that you, you will develop the skills and you will undergo the necessary training. I, in Elliot's case, he, he clearly doesn't have the, those skills, if we're taking him as, as the example we're going for. And I think if we're going to review it and look at this as a broad issue, we should perhaps think about, instead of the welfare officers being democratically elected with us, maybe look at basing it on skill set and then electing or appointing, rather, the welfare officers on that basis. Because it seems to be the only way you could guarantee that you would avoid the issues that are entailed by your question. Won't that just guarantee that the position's unfilled because nobody will be suitably qualified no job. i don't think it will because you get a lot of people running um who and we've had we've had it in the past but kate has done a fantastic job this year at proving that, that there are people out there who have the necessary skills and over the last from well, my time here i would say every female welfare officer that has has been in the position has had the necessary skills because <coughs> i would say minus the candidate this year the people that run for the welfare positions they, they know exactly what they're getting themselves into it's not a position that they would just be on for for you know the exec to, to get into the event stuff or because they're quite fancy giving the, the student politics thing a crack. It's because they really do deeply care, it seems to be a thing. Can you give me an example of the sort of skills that you need? Because it seems that you have other... Okay, you yeah. have other this is going to go on forever, uh, so maybe we should talk about it. We've we've it. Basically, it. you need to be you know, well aware of... Um, basically, equality issues are going to be massive. Um, also, issues, issues surrounding sex, just as a thing, that's too naive an answer to justify, but you need to be clued up on that. You also need to be well versed in mental health issues. I'm going to pass on because yeah. we could do this all night, but it's obvious what skills you need. Oh. Maybe a way to get around it would be to change it so it's male and female welfare officers rather than male welfare and female welfare officers. As before, we've been talking about what issues are specific to female welfare and male welfare. Maybe they're both supposed to be trained in both. So you have got a female and you've got a male welfare officer who anyone could be able to approach. I think the issue is more about who people are comfortable going to. So, as Ash suggested, and I mean Sam made some really good points as well, but if both um, welfare officers could talk to anyone and then if um, you know someone comes along and wants help and specifically wants to talk to a male or specifically wants to talk to a female, I think it is really important that there is someone there 
that they feel that they can talk to, but I agree that men can also deal with female welfare issues if the female looking for the welfare is comfortable with that as well. Um, I, think that, uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to be playing on this thing, but um, no, um, I, they, they, there's no, there's no issue. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's freedom of expression, and the democracy will decide. Most people think it's a stupid thing, so most people are going to vote against it, and that won't be a fucking problem. Now the issue is, we don't need to say different candidates we can make. Oh, only men can run, only women can run. Let them all run, and democracy will decide. Now what we need is a welfare committee that represents everyone. No one woman and no one man can represent everyone in Heathrow. There are Catholics, there are gay people, there are transgender people. There's a plethora of different things, and a welfare committee underneath and organised by two welfare officers who are appointed democratically is what we need to best represent welfare issues. Does anyone anyone want to pick up on what any of the candidates have said on this issue and ask any more questions? James? Uh, I hate to be picky, but you said you need a male welfare officer and a female welfare officer. How would trans man and trans woman factor into this? Well, mm. um, is that a question to a specific candidate? Yeah, you You did? Yeah. To Pete. Uh, to Ash. Yeah, you need a male and a female and a trans They can go to both, or either. Whichever one they're comfortable yeah. going to. Yeah, oh, I was curious about that. Okay, anyone else? Andy? Um, this was alluded to in the non sad question time, but do you feel it would be, it would even, uh, be better to uh, have the two positions put together and just have one welfare officer? Um, can we just really quickly, like, yes, yes and why, no, and why? So, do I think they should be turned into one welfare officer? I don't think they should, no, because welfare issues are so wide, it's good to have at least a small consultation within your exec. No, we need both a male and a female welfare officer. No, we need a male, a female, and if possible, more than that, because it is a really big job. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's fine as it is. <laughs> okay. Um, as any, okay. Uh, any more questions from the floor not related to this issue? Danny. Right. Um, Nori talked earlier about having a female equivalent of Dominic. So we have Dominic McLaughlin, who's you know got a psychiatry qualification, or whatever he's got, but we don't have a full-time female equivalent, which is frankly just stupid. <laughs> Like, yeah, we have days. She's not, she's not in every day. Like, she's in for eight hours. Eight hours. So if, you're, if you've got a problem, I hope that it's in those eight hours. Are you guys going to do anything about that? Okay. Um, obviously, as, as a VP, I'm a lobby for you guys. I can, uh, there's a certain amount I can do, and that is lobby college to the end degree. And if it becomes apparent that there's enough demand from students that, that an, a female equivalent to Dominic is needed, then obviously college will have to act on that. But I can't, I can't say what college will do. I can only say that I will lobby for you because that's what I am, I'm your mouthpiece. Yeah, I'll work as hard as I possibly can to try and get a female equivalent of Dominic, um, if that's what you want. One of the main things that I've said in my manifesto is about how I want the students to be able to have a voice, I want you to be able to have input, like, you know, ask you what you want, and so if there are a lot of people who think that that is necessary, then obviously we'll address that, and as some said, you know, badger them as much as we possibly can, but we can't force them. Verbatim from my manifesto, I will fight for, for I will work with welfare officers to fight for better provision of health and mental health services, and that's included in that. Okay, um, any, any further questions on that point that Daniel's asked? Spell up. The council that we have here on site, I've heard many, many bad negative stories. But apparently, it's really difficult to, you know, get the college to change the council that we have. What are you going to do about that? I mean, okay. Well, how's the other way around the There's not much we can do other than food. <laughs> putting our middle finger off them, there's not really yeah. anything we can do. I mean, we do sit on governing body now, we, 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 we also got access to reserve business. There, there's more, there's, there's something we can do, but we can't control that. We don't sit on the board at the time, it's really pointed. Okay, Jazz? As Pete said, you know, we can badger the college as much as we possibly can, and I really want to make sure that the things that are most important to the students are the things that we badger the college most about. 
I will keep persisting with the issue until something is, until we've got a solution of some sort. Um, yeah, basically with this, we, we have got to the position, thanks to Ashley and Alex and other people's work, that the college are willing to listen to the union a lot. I think uh, just lobbying against, if people come to a union, we'd say the councillor is terrible, she's not doing what she's meant to do. That is perfect grounds for us to take like, serious action against college. But people pointed out the reserve business. We've got right, college could theoretically take them away, but to do so would effectively show that they're not doing you justice. We can only fight for you and with you on the, on the issue. Um, if, if it's that bad, it, it will succeed. Right, uh, we'll try and make it more specific this time. So, uh, any questions now, not relating to the issue that we just had, uh, for just the vice presidential candidates? Really? <laughs> no worries. I have a question. Um, obviously, I'm interested in welfare, so that's what <laughs> I'd like to hear, but you can pick anything from your manifestos. I would like three examples, please, of not what you will do, but how you will do it. Okay. Um, right. That's, that's really easy. I'm going to struggle to pick simply three. Um, I will begin with the um, student, well, small and specialist college network. We've got a lot out of that. I can bring um, through consultation with, with people I've already spoken to, it, it can happen, would be uh, paid internships into <coughs> college. I think it's kind of a travesty that we have a really talented student body. We, we don't really do anything with them. We sort of say, oh good, yeah, you graduate, contacts. And we just sort of wish them farewell. That would be one thing. I'd improve the student experience that way. Um, development of facilities, just generally here. I think um, taking a portion of the budget, uh, this is something that a lot of the unions do, but it needs to be done, and just addressing the, the smaller issues um, with, with the basement area. It's not quite perfect. Accessibility has been one thing that we've already spoken about. I think doing that, the easiest way you could go about that is to just hammer college with it. It's completely ridiculous, and we've got a significant number of disabled students here. It's worth bearing in mind, not all disabled students are in a wheelchair screaming, look at me, I'm disabled. Mm -hmm. um, thirdly, the bar. Uh, that, that's been passed and proved, but you, we need to get it through committees. I've got the relevant experience, I know talk, who to talk to on what committees, and I can make sure it's, make sure it's hammered through and not just forgotten about and left in the background. Um, so one of the big things is uh, renovation of basement. Um, will work with contractors and stuff and specifically get experts in to tell us yeah, how we can get disabled access in then speak to college and speak to staff and say this is how we can do it let's go and do it let's do it now another thing that i wanted to do was get um, an IAU system in place for students who want to go to events didn't have the um the funds available put a system in place where it's easy for us to do that won't be difficult won't cause um massive um, confusion and another thing is working with the cantina i know it's um sort of put in stone their contract and stuff. We keep on badgering um, the staff, keep on working with the catering staff, with um, the canteen people, and we might be able to get some change, get more variation in food. Okay, any follow-up questions on what the Vice Presidential Candidate said? John? Is there anything in place currently within the union that is involving IOUs? Because I don't think that I've paid for a single event this year. Uh, yeah, there is. <laughs> um, what, what Ash is proposing actually already exists. It's already a thing. Um, it, it's not a new proposal. Uh, it's, it, to extend it is kind of dodgy because you end up with your union not having any cash to deal with because everybody owes them money. The IOU system, as, as Ash proposed, it already exists. It's not very well publicised at the moment, so maybe make it more public so freshers know when they first come in they don't have their loans in for freshers week. Specifically, they can't go to events, so they've got a bit of a time to get an investment loans come in so they can actually pay them. Any follow-up questions on this? <coughs> Well, so, so it does exist. It, so as, as like to, to, it to, to us, so you're proposing something that already exists. Make it more public, make it more well-known. So, so it already exists. So because it's in stereo posters that you're going to introduce this. Yeah, because it already exists. the question that it didn't exist. It wasn't as widely well-known, so it wasn't. Okay. Um, on Dan's question, my question is how, how will you expand the current system to make it better? How will you promote expressions who aren't yet here without saying, yeah, you don't really have to buy one of these wristband things, you know. I'll make them buy it, because they'll, they'll go like, you know, through a contract and stuff, so they'll have to sign stuff in, put their um, IDs in and stuff like that. They will get known before they come to uni that if they're seeing events, I'm not coming on time, but they can then um, go to the events. And... Okay, um, I think we'll move on from that for now. Um, uh, any questions for presidential candidates? Um, someone who we've not had before. <laughs> okay, someone we have had before. John. Um, for presidential, is this? Presidential candidates. Oh, okay. Well, this is a question I was going to pose to the events. Candidate. Um, 
However, you are the bosses, so you'll be doing this presumably behind the scenes as well. Um, what are you going to do to the students, or for the students, who are very, very, very not like me and poor desperate Hannah here who love to get involved in everything, uh, and who actually are very quiet and who like to sit in their rooms and who are much more low profile, how are you going to coax these students, these future students, prospective students, out of their shells and into the world that is Heathrow? Well, Heathrow. Uh, well, uh, with uh, the entertainment, uh, events and same team. I'll, I'll just give you an example. Yeah, um, you, you know the Lakahi Festival that happened yesterday, or the Feastival as they like to call it. Uh, I was the manager for that. I've been working with them for months. And free burgers get a lot of students out of rooms when they're on their way. I mean, there's not much more than posters and Facebook and everything that you can do to, to attract these people. But, I mean, certainly things like the Feastival have had a, a marked um, their success in terms of attracting the students. And I've got a proven track record in providing such events. Um, I think one of the things is that uh, a lot of students who miss Freshers Week or the uh, Freshers Festival where you have the, um, all the stores for the societies then never end up joining the societies or coming to any of the meetings or events or anything like that. And also I noticed on Facebook when there's an event page for um, a hip hop event, that's the only way I find out about them usually. And there were only like 200 people invited to each of those out of the like 800 students that we have. So what I would do is try and get the student union website completely changed so that um, there's like a page for each society, people can sign up for the societies on there, emails can be sent out to everyone who does, so if they don't come to the store and write their name down, they're still included. And also that will have an events calendar that's constantly updated with when each society's meeting are so that people can go along to those and when all the main events are and things like that. And that will also be a physical calendar that's down in the basement too. Follow-up questions, uh, Miles? Um, well, that exists partially in terms of there is a page for each society mm. and a page for, and the way that the info is contacted. <coughs> yeah. There is also a calendar that people can use. One of the problems I've had this year is that people from heads of societies haven't contacted me the sorts of things uh, they want. Well, I would contact them. Yes, I did contact them. And I, I've, well, I've, I've gone to the um, society meeting and they said that I'm here. And I've had maybe two emails all year uh, and about this. So, I mean, how would you kind of encourage societies to... Uh, Remembering as well that people don't always check their emails, and there are many students here that don't actually really access, you know, sort of social media. Mm. Uh, it's on, it's available on the internet. Well, that's why I think it's important to do it on the student union website. You know, if you want to know a student event that's going on, you wouldn't necessarily check your Facebook or your um, college email, which suggests that it's from college rather than from the union. Um, yeah, it does exist. Yes, the societies don't use it, and I think we really should change that. I'm not sure how to do it yet exactly, but it's something that I definitely work on. I think um, if society heads were sort of brought in earlier rather than um, it just being when Freshers Week starts and maybe had more meetings with them to discuss things that they could do, get more of a long-term plan of what they're going to do over the term, then that could help. Okay, any uh, follow-up questions again? Uh, Matt. Um, one thing potentially you could do, and I'm just, the question is, would you do it, is um, we're currently only allowed to advertise in the basement, so it's kind of a follow-up, which seems stupid because the majority of the students don't actually come to the basement, they'll just come in and out for their lectures. We, we really need to snap that frames and, and currently upstairs complain that we've got any sort of posters not in the basement. Will you um, badger on at them to let us have some snap that frame areas that are near main lecture rooms. Okay, quick, quick uh, yes. The vice president. Yeah, I, it's, yeah, it's well, actually a vice presidential issue. One yeah. thing I'd say with that is, if it's a really, I think that's a really easy, achievable goal that you could do over summer. If they're willing to give us like reserved access to things that are, you know, important meetings like you know, a governing body, and so it's like I don't see why we can't have a snap frame on the wall. Like it's, it just seems a thing you could clear it quite quickly. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, the issue arised, I think, when there were things that they didn't necessarily approve of that were part of there, or things that looked scruffy. Um, so, obviously, if we made sure the posters were all the right size for the frames and there weren't old posters left up for ages and there was nothing, you know, showing giraffe porn, um, <laughs> then it probably wouldn't be as much of an issue. 
things. I'd, I'd, I'd like to raise just a quibble. We, there's a sports and societies board upstairs already that we can use, and on top of that, societies, if they ask permission, can put up posts upstairs, which I do regularly. Now, if you do want snap frames, though, I install all the snap frames. So I'll go to set, I'll get up here, and I'll put up the fucking snap frames. Right. <laughs> Last question on this issue, then we're moving on to another fresh question. Um, Rory. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not a question as such, but I'd just like to make a follow up comment to something that Jazz said. Um, like, we all, all, all sides of that have Facebook, yeah, it's true, but uh, the problem with Facebook is that like, you can only contact your friends on it. So I think um, I would be fully supportive of anything that has. Um, the website, the Students' Union website, has um, as, as, uh, publicised more, so all the students can access that. I mean, there are uh, many mature students, mature students don't do Facebook as, as, as that, so I think that's a great suggestion. Okay, uh, fresh questions now, uh, and we'll do it again to all candidates. Uh, so, Millie. Um, in Jazz's speech, she made a really interesting um, statement about you're all pretty much aiming for similar things. So vote for character, not um, your promises. Um, could you give us like, a short list of the things about you personally that we, we could be voting for? Your character? Oh, was that the thought? No, that's to, that's to all of you. That's if we're going to vote for like, not your promises, but your character. Right, we'll, do, uh, we'll do some people that don't always get like first go, so we'll go for that. <laughs> um, well, I'm me. Um, quite sassy, can get things done, can be quite professional at times as well. Um, it's my character, I guess. Quite honest as well, I'm open about things. Okay. Um, I can't provide sass, but I can provide, <laughs> I can provide diligence and competence. I, within weeks of arriving here, I managed to get Tony Ben to come. He's not everybody's cup of tea, but I'm a doer. If I say I'm going to do it, I'll, I will do it. If he is a doer, John knows. But, you know, just ask for John. And read my manifesto. Everything in there is completely achievable. You don't look at it and go, he, he might not be able to do that. I, I can do all the things, I promise. Yeah, I could do the all and honest guy, but most of you know me already. There's nothing to be saying. Um, Jess. Um, I'm really honest. I really, really care about Hey Bob. I love this place. I think it's such a unique environment and I really, really want to make it better because of that. So, um, yeah, mostly just the fact that I like care about the job so much that I would absolutely make sure that it got done. I like care about the student experience and that would really motivate me to do as much as was possible. I'm, I'm many things. I, I may not be particularly sexually attractive, although I'm here with disagree. Um, <laughs> one thing I can say is that I am caring, and I've demonstrated that from the start. I've taken over society, I've been a student representative, I've been a student ambassador, I am on, I'm on the organising committee for the Lakai Festival, for, for, you know, I've been writing for the line, I've been showing that I care, I haven't been talking about caring.